we're going to go in where we go. Okay, so I've I've been on uh, several jipping and piking runs. Uh, first one with the new trailer, uh, performed impeccably. Um, <laughs> so did the roof rack actually, which is a surprising night. Um, there were times coming home with this, uh, I don't know, is that, uh, is that seven meter? It might even be longer, you know? It's a big old lump of I-beam. <laughs> uh, yeah, times when I thought the roof rack was gonna give way, but either way it didn't. Uh, nice, nice uh, small section I-beam. Pretty hard to get hold of this stuff now, isn't it? I don't think anyone even makes it or uses it these days, but um, yeah, that's a, that's a handy bit of steel. Um, <clears throat> so, what have I got? Um, this is a, uh, um, a tractor back actor yeah so this um this is the the, the part of the back actor i'm going to put a couple of stock images up here just for you to have a look at um i think this is a mcconnell unit um either way um and uh is it basically meant to go on a not a small tractor but uh you know uh, for the day a medium sized tractor like a you know fergie or something like that i suppose um and i primarily i think these things were for ditch clearing and ditch digging um not heavy heavy work uh you know you can tell if you, if you look at the sort of sections used here this is kind of equivalent to the smaller excavators like the the sort of uh, mini mini digger sort of things um you know sort of one to three ton diggers nothing really heavy there is there i mean there's you know heavy forging and whatnot but the uh the rest of the structure is fairly lightweight so this isn't a huge digger it didn't weigh a lot <clears throat> it didn't weigh a lot uh, obviously i broke it down into bits we've got the bucket here bucket st here still on the um, end section of the boom that was easily liftable another bit of boom there all the rounds everything's present and correct uh, the feet <laughs> which were the you know single most heaviest part um, they've got massive great big iron slabs on the bottom of them can't really see them here yep and uh, what else I got yesterday the uh, Lister TS2 I think it's a TS2 uh, they're all pretty similar the, the TS2 was the smallest of the well yeah, smallest capacity at, and uh, had an output of about 20 horsepower but it could be a tx or a tr but um it's got the data plate off so we'll have to try and find out from the um from the serial number what it is um uh, what well, yeah pretty exciting stuff chaps so uh i'm not done yet collecting stuff i had been on a couple of couple of other runs um little diesel engine is very cheap at the minute I mean, I've, I've been looking because of the cement mixer, uh, which I have an engine for, but I, I figured I, I needed to replace the engine I had on the shelf. You know, uh, wasn't intended to get anything this uh, um, low output wise. This is a uh, LD, I think, Lister LD, um, governed to 900 RPM <laughs> with an output of 1.8 kilowatt, uh, no, 1.8 horsepower. Yeah, pretty pretty sweet little thing. Obviously, um, tin worms been at it, but the engine itself still spins. Um, that should be that should be fun. Doing the tin work and getting that running. No idea what I'd use that for. Uh, as well as that, we have a uh, much much bigger lister. Um, oh God, we need to take a close off again, don't we? Uh, obviously, this has got a hide pump on it. This is this is the engine for running the hydraulic winch uh, which will operate the crane so we're going to have a diesel hydraulic crane uh, lift lift yeah because <laughs> you know electric would be a bit boring wouldn't it I suppose um, again this one's missing some bits it's, it turns it turns uh, but the uh, we're, we're missing return lines and I haven't been into it yet so I don't know what else is missing but you know um, should be easy enough to get it going nice old electric winch as well like everything's really cheap at the minute so i've kind of gone a bit mad um yeah anyway i've got some more bits to pick up so really i've got to unload this truck and uh go and pick them up but um I'll, how about i'll get this off we'll try and start that ts2 uh and then i'll get the other bits and i'll i'll show you show you the other bits
Yes, lads. Hmm. All right, that's a bit of a brucey bonus. Uh, as you can see, the TS2 or whatever it is um, didn't quite fire up straight away. It does have this this plate. It's got a serial number, but no no model number. LV? Is it an LV? I don't think it's an LV. Maybe it's an LV. I don't know. You don't really know. Um, does it matter? Yeah, I'd like to know what sort of power output this is. Um, yeah. Okay, so once again this week has not gone at all as planned. I've uh, been a bit busy and I've got another contract so um, I, I won't have a chance to um, to get the other bits that I'd, I've wanted to pick up for a while. Um, anyway, it has some sort of weird constellation. Um, con constellation, whatever. Con constellation? Oh, yeah. um, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> this is the other bits that I've, I don't think I'd show you. Look. I did if I did take a video of this it had the cover on it still this is um uh this is a peta 1 dash 2 yeah a w 1 slash 2 um wait I mean this is the reason I I got uh, most of the other stuff basically because I see this on eBay and it was really cheap and I went round to uh to get it and, and ended up buying a a load of other bits. Um, uh, yeah, it's a bit bit weird. Um, you notice it's uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what it is. Yeah, it's probably just easier if I just tell you. Um, it's, it's basically, Peta made a an air cooled twin. Yeah, um, and then they made the boat version that's water cooled. They had two of these cylinders. There's a single single cylinder version as well, both water and air cooled. Uh, and then this has one of the one of the cylinders removed from the two cylinder engine and replaced with an air compressor and these were these were used as starting engines for um air start diesels not uh not diesels that used um a vane type air motor like uh like your mac trucks and stuff on the on the big detroits but um actually sequencing the the valve lifters on the on the big four stroke diesel so it turned the engine itself into a into an air motor on a few cylinders so i think it's you know it obviously depends how many cylinders the engine is but um there's normally a couple of cylinders where the it will have special lifters to open the valves up and you'll dump all the air that this little engine has charged up into those cylinders and it will start it yes. um, Normally only common on much much bigger diesels, sort of a, uh, you know, um, I don't know, uh, very big diesels like in ships and stuff, you know. Um, but this apparently, the, most of these were on big McLaren generator sets that went out to Russia on a on a contract with the Soviets during the war, uh, not lend lease, but, uh, but um, a McLaren contract. But this one. It's got too many aluminium bits on it to be that older of a of a petter. So I don't know. I don't know whether this is made later in small numbers, and you know, it is in a in a barn in Cambridgeshire. So um, yeah, who knows? <laughs> who knows? It's pretty, it was pretty interesting. That's how I ended up getting it, and then it, it led to it led to everything else. Yeah. Uh, this is my. Um, Got this S S T or S R S R S R T. So this is only it says uh, it says 13 horsepower, but that's a 2,000 RPM, and it's got the variable speed, so it should should turn turn at 3,000. It should go up to 3,000 and put out about 17 horsepower. Yeah, it's quite a lot of power, you know, <laughs> and that's all talk. These guys didn't uh, didn't fudge the numbers, you know. Uh, but yeah, this thing's absolutely epically heavy. So uh, so what I'm thinking of is it's the sort of perfect perfect engine or counterbalance for uh, for the for the backhoe. Um, I need to find a pair of axles though. That's that's what I had been looking for this week. Um, but that didn't that didn't happen. Um, and I took the took the covers off these because I, I, 
you know, I know it's a, an electric winch and, you know, it's probably not going to impress anyone, but uh, I like the name on it. I thought I'd show you. It's <laughs> from a company in uh, in Horsham, Sussex, uh, a company called Plummet. <laughs> He just thought that was nice, a nice name for an electric winch company. Yeah, this is only 500 kilo capacity, but it's a beautiful winch. Really, um, really, really reckon that better be uh, on the safe side, you know. Um, it's not going to start struggling at 500 kilos, is it? And, you know, I took the cover off so you could see the beautiful ST. Uh, I think this one's an ST. So this is slightly, slightly larger capacity per cylinder than the SR. Did I say that one's an SR? Whichever one that one is, this one isn't. But this one hasn't got a data plate on it. Yeah, this is an SR, so that's smaller per cylinder. And this is this one must be the ST then. But yeah, we've just got bits missing. Uh, unfortunately, this one's like the like the ST. This one's sort of semi seized, so I can get a quarter rotation out of the out the crank, but then it it binds up so um probably probably got water sat in there i poured a load of kerosene in here and did with that one as well uh, i'm not really ready to do anything with them yet but um hopefully that can start uh soaking soaking into the balls this one's obviously seen a lot of work look how the uh the fuel tanks eroded the uh the mounting points but that's that's jammed up as well that's the start stop lever uh, still got oil in it though, which is nice. Not much. Not very nice, but there is oil in there. Yeah, so those, <laughs> those are my bits and bobs, folks. And of course, there's the uh, the mighty Coles crane winch. Um, hopefully, hopefully this pump will be um, large enough volume to drive that winch. But I don't know. I've got no idea what sort of pressures either of these put out and, and the volumes. So. Um, uh, and I'm not really sure how to calculate that without any of the data. So this this one doesn't have a data plate on it, but um, that one does. I should imagine I'll be able to find out what I need in order to drive that pump. But either way, those are those are projects for another day. Anyway, I am uh, I am you know digging hard in the hole, uh, but I've I've got a busy week next week again. Um, so I thought I'd just make this little video and uh, finish it off before I've got the other bits, and um, you can uh, you can see see what I've been up to. This thing this thing nearly fucking killed me. So bloody heavy. Um, I can't remember what the figures were. I'm pretty sure it was north of 400 pounds weight wise. So all right, no, it can't be. It must be more than that. I think it felt it felt like more. You know. Not that I could pick it up, but you know, rocking it backwards and forwards, sliding it down, down the dodgy ramps, um, yeah, certainly felt a lot more. But I don't know, don't know offhand. Um, I did look it up. I can't remember now though. Uh, yeah, you know, my back still hasn't fully recovered. And of course, I got the uh, the engine crane that I got um, last week. But uh, uh, what? Well, yeah, it's not much good on this ground. So I built this uh, ridiculous um, sack trolley just to, you know assist in moving the engines which you know it was quite handy because it meant i got the others into the into the shed there um but but what yeah i still haven't uh still haven't got these packed away and ready to go into the shed um what, what i've got to do is finish the cement mixer then make a couple of glass fiber molds for the concrete sections and then i can pull that little lot into the shed which will obviously free up that trolley um, and uh, and start preparing it to to go into operation as the uh, as the lift for the hole. Uh, and oh, you know, that should happen within the next couple of months, to be honest. Yeah, get the get the digging done and uh, get my glass fiber moulds made up, and then um, yeah, there's nothing really stopping us, is there? The only problem will come. Um, it's getting quite cold, isn't it? So, uh, you know, if I if I'm pouring concrete for my moulds, I'll have to do it uh, in an enclosed environment that I can heat. So, I might end up making a little temporary shed here, 
um, otherwise I'm going to have to do it in the main shed which will be a complete ball ache because uh, they'll be quite big won't they and they'll stop us doing fun stuff like uh, building a lift but I'm sure um, yeah I'm sure I'll just rig up a temporary plywood box or something anyway that's it folks uh, sorry we've not had um, more more action in the hole yet um, it is coming it's happening you know the uh, the old faithful dump truck hard at work um, compressor working well uh, air tools down the hole I even got myself um, some uh, some even better um, anti-vibe gloves but yeah just uh, just you know life getting in the way of stuff like it always does anyway I uh, hope you enjoyed that little peek at uh, the weird shit I've been collecting and um, yeah take it easy folks alright bye bye